Hi again then guys and welcome to another Team HSG sponsor collaboration, this time once again with Ness in Pyjamas. And for those who are maybe new to this series, basically it's uh, an institution here on the channel where you can support the channel on Patreon and in return you can work with me every month to craft your own videos that can go onto the channel. But that's it for the spiel, click down below to check that out and for now, let's get straight into the vid. Greetings from my bedroom. Welcome to episode 102 of GT Masters. Once again, taking a look at Gran Turismo 1 with another race car. Hold up. Race car? Yep. And this is actually something I deliberated on for quite some time as to which series this version of the Dodge concept car should be in. Because it has the specs of a race car, you can tune the downforce, you cannot upgrade it, and it's not allowed in the normal cup events, all of which line up to being in GT Masters. But it doesn't look like a race car. It just looks like a normal cop head just with bigger specs and senior purple or yellow. That should indicate it being in the Ultimate Exotics or Random Review series. Ultimately however, I end up putting in GT Masters because it does give out the same type of feel that something like the Ferrari FXX or McLaren P1 GTR gives off, even without the visual upgrades. Let's talk about this car, which from now on I'll refer to as the Concept Car LM. Now for those who weren't aware, as I mentioned earlier, this was originally called the Copperhead. It's a concept car, no sh that was originally made to be Dodge's entry-level sports car, like a slower, more attainable version of the Dodge Viper. So it has a 2.7 liter V6 instead of the 8 liter V10, has just over 200 horsepower, and as a result, it wouldn't be anywhere near as fast around the track. But then, Polyphony not only decided to bring the Copperhead over to Gran Turismo 1, making it certainly one of the weirdest cars to be added, I personally like it a lot, but they also decided to make a racing version of this car. In fact, during the beta stages of Gran Turismo, this looked more like a Copperhead race car with the wing. I'm quite frankly surprised they did this and not a Corvette, Camaro, or DB7 race car. Now, I'm sure there's valid reasoning as to why, but as far as we got with this car, well, as I touched upon in my Impreza Rally Car review, this car is a monster. And quite frankly, completely unrealistic. Now, as I said, it's using that same 2.7 liter V6, and that puts out a pretty reasonable 560 horsepower. That's not too bad. It's not as much as the Impreza and other cars, but it's nice regardless. The torque is also decent, 318 pound-feet. Again, surprisingly not as high as you would expect when comparing it to the other cars, but that's still nice to work with. However, it's the weight that makes this an absolute weapon. Just to give you how ridiculously light this car is, let me list off a selection of cars this is lighter than. The Honda Del Sol LM race car, one of the very few sub 900 kilo cars in Gran Turismo 1. Peugeot 905, the lightest Le Mans race car in Gran Turismo. SRT Tomahawk GTSR, Honda Beat, the Super Formula cars, even the Red Bull X2014 standard. The in game specs doesn't lie, this is 1,330 pounds, or in metric terms, 603 kilograms. I repeat, 600 and f Three. in a North American and Japanese version of this game. Yeah, sorry to the European audience, this car is a lot heavier in your version of the game. It's still very good though, 900 kilograms. That's the same weight as a TVR server LM race car. And to be honest, I would love to hear your feedback on how this car feels in the PAL version of the game, because man oh man do I have a lot to say about it here. See, the Dodge Concept Car LM with stock settings is a great car already. In fact, I would say it's top 5 straight out of the box. However, it feels awful to drive. As you've seen from the comedic intro, this car has a very high tendency of jumping all over the place, accelerating up and down in an instant all the time. It literally feels like riding a jackhammer like the engineer from Team Fortress 2. Now, this is track dependent on how often this occurs, but as you can see here on Trial Mountain Reverse, it does this all the time. It's not fun in the slightest in my opinion, because while you can argue that it does offer plenty of means from looking silly, it's just plain annoying to drive, despite it still being very capable of winning events easily. It's for this reason why this is the only car in my series which I would highly recommend you tune up. In particular, you need to decrease the dampers to 1 or 2, as that gets rid of the jackhammer problem. Now I know what some of you are thinking. What about the Subaru Impreza Rally car? That car has a very low top speed stock, and there are lots of moments where you're stuck doing 160 on the streets while the competition is doing 180 or more. That is true. However, as I mentioned in that review, the Impreza is still incredibly fun to drive around corners. 
it almost completely mitigates the top speed issue, where you only counter it like once or twice a lap. The jackhammer issue on the concept car, however, is a constant problem, and while again, it is very track dependent, you'll counter to pretty much every event it's allowed in, since Gran Turismo 1 has only championships and not a single events like GT2 onwards. Now, once you do end up tuning this car, that's where it becomes incredible. Arguably the biggest strength of the concept car LM is its mid-range acceleration. Off the line, it's okay. 3.1 seconds to 60 isn't great, but it's still doable. 0 to 400 meters takes 9.5 seconds, and that's really good compared to the other race cars. 0 to 1000, however, is 16.8 seconds. That is tied for the fastest car to 1000 meters alongside the FTO LM. That should show you just how incredible the acceleration is. That is stock, just so you know, but the first straight of the test course doesn't have the jackhammer issue. And once you do decrease the dampers, I cannot stress it enough, this is very important. You can utilize this trick pretty much all the time. It still jumps a tiny bit from time to time if you set the dampers on too like I have, but it's nowhere near as noticeable. The handling, surprisingly for how light this car is, isn't as sharp as something like the RX-7 or Cerbera race cars. It's actually very forgiving, and I think part of the reason why is that the wheelbase is quite long, keeping it more grounded and reducing body roll. It's pretty much a Suzuki Escudo of GT1. It is that good. As far as obtaining this car, you can win this by winning the America vs. England Championship, and you can win either this Copperhead or the RX-7 A-Spec Alum Edition. It's completely random though, so you may have to do this event multiple times if you keep getting the RX-7. That is still a great car, but obviously this is better. With that being said, what do I personally think about the concept car LM? Well, shockingly, when recording footage for this review, I found myself loving this car more than I ever had. Because before then, it was nowhere near my favorites. And that might shock you if you know me from the comment section or the Discord server, considering Dodge is my favorite manufacturer, and they produce my favorite car, the Viper GTS. But this car for a long time, I didn't really like that much. And the main reason why was how awful this car was to drive stock. I was fully aware of how amazing this car was when tuned properly, even being aware of just how much better it was compared to every race car in the game. But there was a time where I didn't even know how to properly tune up cars with the suspension and transmission and downforce. It wasn't until I found Hammer Studios Gaming and watched the tune videos for GT6 and Sport that I got a better feel of how to tune up cars. So a long time before that, I was stuck driving the Comsa car LM stock and I did not enjoy it in the slightest. That's one of the things about Gran Turismo in general that I don't really like. Unless you are reading or kinesthetic learner, understanding how to properly tune up cars can be very confusing and not seem like worth the time. So I don't blame anyone who also doesn't like this car for the jackhammer issue. However, what changed with this review is that I got over the salt of driving this car stock and fully experienced this car with tuned settings, and my enjoyment for this car got a lot higher. Now I still wouldn't say it's in my top 10 favorites in the game, but there were two crucial moments from recording that opened my eyes more. One was that I managed to take this car on the same track as the car stock, trial them on reverse, and beat the two lap time trial by 12 seconds. And here's the crazy part I never even realized, that was on raising hard tires. The stock car was on softs. In fact, the first lap of the two trial was faster than the second lap of the stock one. And again, this is still a great car stock. The time I got was around the same time it would have gotten in the Cerbera LM or the Impreza Alicar. But this car when tuned, it's not even close, even with hard tires. As for the other moment, I took this for a spin in the all-night endurance race on Special Stage Route 11. Now, although this car was dominant around the track as expected, what really surprised me was how I kept going through the chicane section without crashing. And for anyone who has played Gran Turismo 1, that section is one of the toughest in the entire series. I'm thinking of doing a lap guide for this circuit anyway, which is also why I did this event so I can record footage for that upcoming video. But the only time where I unintentionally crashed into the walls was at lap 16, and immediately afterwards I pitted. Those moments of driving gave me a lot more connection towards this car, and truly appreciate the incredible acceleration and forgiving handling, especially after driving the Chase Zero LM last time. My only issue is that I can't really get over the weight of this car. I don't know, something about the concept car LM being lighter than a modern F1 car, it kind of devalues the realism of this game, even though this is a fictional creation. Incidentally, the Cerbera LM and Viper GTSR also weighed a lot lighter in the Japanese version of this game, so maybe they fixed the weight values of those cars and forgot about this one. Maybe not, but it's worth noting. 
Now, to bring up the Alpha in the room, this car technically did get carried over to Gran Turismo 2, just like the impressive Rally car. However, unlike that car, the differences are a lot more apparent. It looks like an actual race car in GT2, the specs are different and more realistic, and strangely, in the NTSC version, it's mid-engine, and that is confirmed to be a bug. So strangely, despite being an American car, the European versions of Gran Turismo 1 and 2 have the more grounded and I would say better respected version of the concept car LM. Now I still love this car regardless, but it's interesting to see. So in the end, would I recommend getting this car to compete in events? Well, yes. But only if you know how to tune this car. I'll leave out the video with the still image of my tune setup for this car so you can see exactly what I did. Or if you want, I could do a tune setup video for this car. Because stock is very good but very annoying to drive, whereas tune, as I said, it's a Suzuki Escudo of Gran Turismo 1. It is mad good. This is Nessa Pajama scene. Fluffy pillows.